I'm expecting an all-out classic, right? There's been a lot of talk over the last week or so about, you know, what's the excitement level for the national championship? There's no SEC team, of course, in the title game. You know, are people going to be fired up? Are people going to be excited? I think the excitement level, believe it or not, is still there. I I think it's just a different kind of excitement to where I'm almost intrigued to see what does a national championship without the SEC look like? Because we've become so accustomed to seeing Alabama and Georgia and kind of the typical few LSU, the typical teams in the in the national championship one way or another. Now we've got this new flavor, right? Just because it's a different dish doesn't mean it still doesn't taste good, right? D- d- it, I am expecting an all-out classic. you got two contrasting styles. You've got Michigan who wants to run the football, ground and pound, not ask J.J. McCarthy to do too much, and has that elite defense. On the other side, you've got this West Coast high-flying, you know, throwing the football down the field, spread them out, finesse, you could, if you will, type of offense, this offensive attack. I'm really fascinated and intrigued to see which of those prevails. But, guys, I think it's going to be an all-out classic. Truly, I do. Um, it's a shame that this was the last season of the Pac-12, and what a way for the Pac-12 to go out, obviously sending Washington and undefeated Washington to the national championship game. Believe it or not, guys, this will be a conference game next year. This is going to be a conference game. So that just goes to show you the conference realignment and how crazy college football is and the shuffling that's going on within the conferences, if you will. Uh, Really excited, though, guys. And again, I I think this game truly is going to be an all-out classic I think you're going to see Washington land some blows. I think Michigan land some blows. My pick is not changing, by the way, here on game day. I still do feel like Michigan is the pick. They're at least my pick. I think they are the team of destiny, which sounds crazy when you think about everything that Michigan has gone through and dealt with. But it just feels like the stars have a line for them getting to this point that they're going to finish the deal. But I would not sleep on Michael Penix Jr. at all. Betting against him is a risk in its own right. And I think that's going to make for a fantastic game. Now, on the Michigan side of things, guys, is this Jim Harbaugh's last game at Michigan? A lot of speculation. Is Harbaugh going to go back to the NFL? Does he want to continue building his legacy or continue building with the Michigan Wolverines? I think this is win or lose Jim Harbaugh's last game at Michigan. I I do. I, I think his tenure there is over. I think because of the headaches that have been caused by the NCAA, which you think about it, guys, the levels of success that Jim Harbaugh has had, especially if they win tonight, right? Especially if the Wolverines win tonight. The levels of success he's had all throughout his career, NFL, then he comes to Michigan, he's a Michigan man, he played quarterback at Michigan. If they win tonight, guys, I I think you look at it, with the way the NCAA is bearing down, with the way it almost seems like they are – And I'm not saying that it wasn't deserved, but they're almost like picking on Jim Harbaugh in Michigan all throughout the season, from the cheeseburger thing to the sign-stealing scandal to him getting suspended half the year. Like, the NCAA, for everything they're not, they're they're worthless most of the time, they're not going to stop, I think, coming after Jim Harbaugh. So I don't think he wants to deal with that headache. I think where there's smoke, there's fire, guys. We heard a couple years ago that Jim Harbaugh was a candidate to go back to the NFL and and pursue an NFL job, pursue an NFL career once again, especially if he wins a national championship. I think you look at the situation, you say, you know what? I've reached the pinnacle. I've reached the mountaintop. There's nothing else that I can do at Michigan that I wanted to do, and I'm not trying to speak for Harbaugh, but – just putting myself in those shoes. There's nothing else that I can do. There's nothing else we can do here that we did not accomplish. We reached the peak of the mountain. And there's great opportunities back in the league, getting away from this NCAA headache where I can just leave and not be a part of it. They can't do anything to me. Chargers or Raiders or somewhere else, I'm heading out. So I think Jim Harbaugh, I think this is his last one. I I would be surprised based off everything we've heard, again, where there's smoke, there's fire, there's a lot of smoke. And Jim Harbaugh, again, it's not like he's a college coach. It's let me take a risk at the NFL. Let me take a risk at the next level and, and try my hand. He's had great success, guys. He's had great success. So I do think this is Jim Harbaugh's last game at Michigan. I think we will see him make a return to the NFL. now. We spend so much time talking about Jim Harbaugh. 
How about the job Caitlin DeBoer has done at Washington? I, I mean, it, I think that really, it needs to be recognized. And examples like Caitlin DeBoer, the Arizona head coach, maybe Josh Heupel at Tennessee, there are others. Brian Kelly at LSU, right? We we preach or we want to preach patience in regards to head coaches and, and, and giving them time to build their program and instill their systems and get their staff figured out. There's a couple of cases, though, that really go to show that if you get the right guy, you don't need five to six years, the guys, to get it going. And, I, and I'm not saying that's a foolproof system. We've seen the other way. We've seen Mark Stoops at Kentucky. Heck, we just saw Eli Drinkwitz at Missouri rattle off an 11-win season, right? And before that, he was he was 5-6, and 6-7, six, 6-7. Six and, seven, six and seven. Like, he was, he was pretty mediocre during his time at Mizzou. But Kalen DeBoer is an example of when you get it right, when you get the right guy in there, when you get the right fit, you could do something crazy like go to the national championship game two years after going four and eight, which is exactly what Washington is doing. We've spent so much time talking Jim Harbaugh, man. Kalen DeBoer has done such a great job with that program, turning them around, you know, building the talent right? Recruiting locally, going out and getting Michael Penix Jr. Uh, from Indiana. They've done such a good job, and I cannot wait to see it play out on the field tonight and their opportunity to win the ultimate prize. Now, there's been a lot of talk, by the way. Let, let me let me go to this, because I know that uh, our good friend Josh Pate, he did a segment yesterday on his show talking about, he was asked about, is the, is the national title game illegitimate without an SEC team in it. And, of course, he shot that down and said that the national title absolutely is legitimate. And I'm going to echo that as well. It is. This is a legit national title. Michigan and Washington earned their ways there. With that being said, I asked this question, though. Do Georgia fans have a legitimate gripe? I know that we love that, especially in the four-team playoff, the BCS era, you know, college football's regular season is so great and that it serves as its own playoff. But I just can't help but think, guys, that, you know, there's nobody watching that national title game tonight. There's nobody who's going to be kicking themselves more than Georgia fans. There's nobody who's going to be kicking themselves more than the Georgia Bulldogs, that staff, that team, because I think they're going to watch that game tonight and know, damn. Georgia would be going back to back to back had they not just had, and this is to take nothing away from Alabama, by the way. But I think we can all admit Georgia did not play their best game in that SEC title game. Georgia was as sloppy as we saw here, self-inflicted wounds, the exact thing we did not think Georgia would do. One bad Saturday, one bad Saturday cost Georgia back to back to back national championships. Because I tell you what, guys, I watched Alabama play Michigan. And with all due respect to Washington, I would take Georgia right now in a heartbeat. I would have taken Georgia over every team that made the college football playoff. That includes Bama in a rematch. It's an interesting year to where, guys, and I'm going to get crushed by Bama people, and I totally understand it. You should be upset when I say this. But in my heart of hearts, and I know that Georgia beat up on Florida State's practice squad, but in my heart of hearts, I sit here today and think the best team in the country isn't playing for the national championship tonight. Because I think the best team still is the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, I think it'd be a great game with Georgia-Michigan, but you watch the Bama game, guys. I mean, I, I posted during the game, how much would Georgia be up right now? It was 10 to 7 at half. And Alabama had, what, 97 yards of offense? They couldn't protect Jalen Milrow. You give me that Georgia offensive line. You give me Carson Beck, who I think is better than Jalen Milrow. Let's call it for what it is. I think he's better than Jalen Milrow, especially when it comes to throwing the football, scanning defenses, just playing the quarterback position. And you give me Georgia's defense, like all the above. I think Georgia wins that game. And I think they win that game by double digits. So, listen, they did not take care of their business. Alabama did in the SEC title game. Bama deserved to go. I understand why you couldn't put Georgia in. I totally get that. I totally get that. But I can't help but feel like the best team this season in college football is sitting at home tonight. And they they deserved it because of their play in the SEC title. But, man, 
what a 12-team college football playoff is going to do to where you get a mulligan, you get a layup. And some people hate that. Some folks despise that. Some folks are looking at it as the lesser of two evils when you factor in what happened to Florida State this year. So there's different ways to look at it. But it's not an illegitimate national title at all. But maybe the best team isn't even playing in the game, that being the Georgia Bulldogs, who I think, and you can go to Vegas right now, would be favored over both. Would be favored over both the teams. Would probably be favored over Washington, maybe by double digits. So, guys, that being said, I mean, this feeds right into my next point is why I'm so ex- I'm so excited for a 12-team college football playoff because all these questions we're not going to have to ask. We won't have to ask. I'm excited for the games to be decided. And this is the, you know, this is the end of an era tonight, by the way. End of an era. I am so excited to see these games, to see all of this determined on the field. You can sit here and tell me that the regular season's a playoff, all that jazz, whatever. But the fact of the matter is that you unless you go undefeated, unless you go undefeated, and obviously we saw this year going undefeated doesn't mean anything. Unless you go undefeated, and even then, your fate is still in the hands of a committee at the end of the season determining, all right, who's the four that should go? 12's not going to be perfect, right? It won't. It won't. Will there probably be some blowouts and some, you know, whatever, it's going to be 5-12 games or, you know, some of those first-round matches? Maybe so, and, and people will point and gripe and say, look, that's why we shouldn't expand it. If there aren't 12 teams good enough to win the national title, you know what? Maybe you'll be right. Maybe some years it'll be two. Maybe some years it'll be six. Maybe some years like this year, you could look at it and say, man, 11 and 12 could have given two and three and four some problems. But either way, at least we'll know on the field. At least we'll know. We won't have to lean on a committee who, God forbid, do they even watch all the games and say, well, what do they think? How do they even determine the top four? We've got to have all this debate and all this conversation instead of just letting it play out on the field. Just let it play out on the field. Then Florida State doesn't have to complain about, well, we'd have done this and that. Well, let's see. Let's see what you would have done. Let's see what Florida State will do without Jordan Travis. Maybe FSU's defense really was good enough to carry them. Maybe, but we'll never know. And that's unfortunate. That's what fires me up for a 12-team college football playoff. The games during the regular season, they're still going to matter to the people that love college football. And all you're doing is increasing the games that matter in a 12-team college football playoff. You're not decreasing, you're increasing. Just because you take a safety net away for the top six or seven teams in the country, that doesn't mean the other 99% of college football is ruined like so many people want to imply. The guys, I, you know, we've already taught the feelings, no SEC team being in the game. You know, I... You may come to the show and think, okay, of course, he's going to be down on the title game. It's No, I'm, I'm actually excited for it. Again, I'm, I'm really, really curious to see what new flavor looks like in the title game. Like, do we get an all-time classic? Do we get a, do we get a snoozer? I think Georgia even has more of a gripe if tonight's game is a snoozer, right? If tonight's game ends up like 10 to 7 for some reason or it's, you know, 17 to 14, some boring game, I think Georgia could really look around and say, man, we would have whooped both these teams' ass. Like, I think Georgia fans will have a legitimate gripe. I won't even blame them for being upset. Now, they got nobody to blame but themselves. But one bad Saturday, one bad Saturday cost the Georgia Bulldogs a chance at back-to-back-to-back national titles, which, again, guys, having the conversation in in itself is is wrong. You go 29-1 and in your last 30, that team dropping from one to six. We, we could just we could just keep having this convo endlessly, and it's still absurd no matter which way you spin it. Either way, guys, like I mentioned, I'm sticking with my pick. I still think Michigan, unfortunately, uh, is the <laughs> is the team of destiny. Um, you know, it's it's and and I'm again, I come from the school of baseball to where sign stealing is just part of the game, right? If you don't hide your signs better, that's sort of on you and and you know. But the levels that Michigan took it to, the levels they took it to, right, are a bit absurd. And, you know, what is the NCAA going to do about it? What should they do about it? I have no idea. 
But the bottom line is this. It, it, it looks like to me a season where a season of destiny for Michigan. The stars have aligned. And I do think Michigan will take down Washington. I do think it's going to be a great game, guys. Spoiler. I think it's going to be a great game. I think Michael Penix Jr. is going to show everyone why, again, he's one of the best players in college football. But I think Michigan will have too much. I think that physicality in the trenches will prevail. I think Blake Corum goes off. And I do think Jim Harbaugh will sail off in the sunset, go to the NFL after this game, and the Michigan Wolverines will return back to the top of college football.